Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wellness Wednesdays with Dr. Sharon, Walt, and Paige Kaminsky. Um, we did not get to meet last week. That was because I had a um, minor emergency in the family and I couldn't be back in time. So we apologize for those who tried to log on and couldn't see us. Uh, before we get started today, um, I just want to take a moment to, um, in our hearts, pray for Israel. Um, there's a, I've reached out to a lot of people who reached out to me and, and vice versa. We have family that lives there. Um, my husband has a very close coworker who literally was zooming from a bomb shelter. Um, so let's just take a moment to, to recognize that there's a lot of chaos going on and we just support those who, who need us. So, thank you. Um, so today's topic, um, I think it was going to be very, um, helpful, hopefully for everybody who's watching. Um, but we're going to start talking about goals, right? Everybody has goals. You know, we start the year off with a resolution, um, with a goal, or we start a new season. Um, but we have some, like an acronym that's pretty popular out there about what kind of goals we set. So I think I'll just offer it up to Paige and Walt. Do you want to talk about the acronym that we use when we talk about goals? Yeah, Sharon, we, um, we kind of use many of the same thing that probably many other people use whether they be personal or in the business world or wherever, they would be SMART goals, right? Um, SMART goals are kind of the way we, we plan things out to kind of make them, uh, I use the word simple. Some people use the word specific, measurable, attainable, relative, and time sensitive. And, you know, when you put them all together, it sm spells SMART, and uh, it's always better to work smarter and not harder, right? That is very true. You know, one of the things that people have asked me a lot about the SMART acronym is the relevant part. And, uh, you know, time stamped is one thing and specific and simple, um, but make sure it's relevant to what you're working towards, not towards what somebody else is working towards, right? These are your individual goals. Um, regardless of what area of life they're in, if they're spiritual or physical or financial, it doesn't matter. Um, but make sure they're something that's in tune with what it is that you want to create for yourself. Yeah, I think that it kind of ties in line with the same thing that we do with the people who we have in our lives, right? You know, they're the people on our hearts. So the goal should be something that's relative to our hearts, something that's very meaningful to us. Um, as specific as we can make it so that it means something when we put all this work in in order to achieve it, right? So, you know, it's got to be on our hearts. It's got to be something that's, um, you know, in our minds and something that we really want to do because it's like dreams, right? You know, we all have different dreams of things we want to do, you know, in our lives before a certain age, before we retire, when we retire, right? How many Americans put all this money into retirement funds and some, some unfortunately don't even get to enjoy it, right? Um, but all these things happen and it's all because we dream. And um, that's where relevance comes in. It's how big do you wanna dream and how far do you wanna go or how much do you wanna change, uh, change the way you live to be healthy, wealthy and wise? I like it. Um, and I just wanna also respect the fact that the Phillies are presently winning. Um, it's game. Oh, they won. Three. Oh, they won. It's over. Did it end? They won. Really? 10 to okay. two, six nice. home runs. Nice. You know, they even let Michael Sorensen pitch. So it was a big job. <laughs> Very nice. Well, kudos, right? We all need some celebration in our life. Um, and, you know, we, we talk a lot about the health in our, you know, Wednesday, um, wellness Wednesdays, but one of the things we're doing recently, today's actually day three is our, um, active step challenge. Um, now there's a caveat to that, meaning you don't have to be able to take steps to participate in a challenge, right? So sometimes we talk about challenges and they're scary. Like, oh, I don't want to do that. Um, let me tell you, I set the bar way too high for myself because I not only walked on Monday, but I ran. So my starting step count was over 12,000 steps. Oops. But you know what? Doesn't matter. So Paige, tell me a little bit about, well, it doesn't matter. Let me finish my thought there. It doesn't matter because I just have to take one more step every day. And if there's a day that I don't get those steps in, I'm not going to beat myself up over it, right? Um, my challenge is me versus me, not me versus Paige, not me versus Walt or anybody else. This is, this is an internal. 
Um, and I commit to doing hard things because it pays off. Paige, what's your day three experience of this really fun challenge we're doing? So oh, I, I kept it kind of tame day one. I only got 11,000 steps. Only. <laughs> only. And you'll see me talk about how um, me going for my walks, it's me time. Me time, my music time gets me in the right mindset for I walk early in the morning. Um, so yesterday I, I, I needed to put in some extra steps. So I did 16,500 yesterday. So <laughs> Yeah, I've really set the bar kind of high, but today I'm at 16,479 steps. So I just have to do like what, 300 more steps and then I'm a hundred steps over than yesterday. But if I keep this going, I'm going to have to be doing like 30,000 steps. I don't know if I can yeah. do that. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a little bit different than both of you. Um, yesterday was a complete flop for me in the fact that I only barely got to 4,000 steps. And I kind of tie that into the fact that I didn't plan well. Um, I didn't plan out my day to get done what I wanted to do. So even though I had a goal, even though I set myself up to try and be able to complete the challenge, things happened. And by the end of the day, I didn't get to where I wanted to go. Today, I did a little bit better. I had some time this morning, I went for a walk, but I still fell about 1,000 steps short of my goal. And my goal is only 8,500 steps a day. And I came up a little bit short of that, but you know, tomorrow I'm going to try a little bit harder. Um, but the fact is, is that I'm not going to let what happened today or yesterday affect the fact that I'm going to sit down tomorrow and say I'm out of the game. I'm just going to get up tomorrow morning and do the best I can. Because all you know, what my coach says to me all the time is, "All you can do is all you can do," and I'm going to be right there with you on Friday, Walt, because I work in the office all day, and I don't get but maybe 4,000 steps just running from room to room to room. Um, so I'll probably make it a point to come home and take a walk, but I know right now that's not gonna have, I'm not gonna hit the levels that I've been hitting, but I'm okay with that because my goal is smart because it's very specific and it's measurable. I'm not judging the goal. I'm not judging myself if I've reached it. I'm working towards something. And I think one of the best values that I have found um, that we talk about frequently, which is one of the reasons why we do these calls is I have people in my life that are understanding of what's important to me, that encourage me. And they also say, hey, you know, take it easy. It's okay, right? Because we tend to get down on ourselves if we don't reach the goal. Oh, we're failures and, you know, we're not worthy and I can't. Yes, you can. You just literally need one more step physically, or um, there's somebody who isn't physically able to walk. So she's actually doing different activities with her hands and her arms, right? So there's just challenging yourself to do a little bit more over the course of time. And I like, um, we were talking about this earlier, Walt, about, you know, set a goal for the end of, say, the challenge that we have a 28 day challenge, maybe just go 25%, right? Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. I think that, you know, I think that the important thing to talk about in terms of our challenge, right? And there's still time to join. Just reach out to one of us. We'll send you the forms and you can do it. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. And more importantly is there's an online community of people you can rally around because I know we're going to talk about the people you rally around here in a moment um, as we round out the evening. But you know, I, I suggested to somebody who had just started the challenge, just started to sign up. And I said, if you know if you're not up for the goal you set for yourself you know unless you're ready you know do it 25 percent of the time each week building up to that goal because it's better to celebrate the wins and have a short goal and a stretch goal and that stretch goal might be that 10,000 steps or 20,000 steps or 30,000 steps but if you're not physically ready to do that you know take it take it in increments you know baby steps um and then at the end of the day um you know, you get to your goal and you celebrate the wins as you go. So it's a, a refreshing thing every time you hit a new goal um, within a goal. I love that. And in terms of this challenge, as, as you mentioned, Walt, you know, it, it is a free challenge. There's no commitment. You basically um, are part of a, a supportive environment if you want to be, but you can just literally use one piece of paper to track your steps and we will check in on you and we will give you resources that we have to help you 
improve whatever that challenge that you're going to do. Um, so it's really fun. So if you're watching this and you don't know anything about this, just reach out to one of us because we love doing these. Um, it holds us accountable um, and it might just help you create, you know, a new healthier way towards the end of the year. Cause you know, if we create this habit of being in action or in motion in 66 days is the average time for a habit. Think about when it's cold and raining and dark out, you'll still be able to move because you'll be in the habit of motion. I just want to throw that out there as well. Um, but we talk a little bit about the people in our lives. Um, do you guys want to talk a little bit about what it's like to, you know, the Phillies are playing, you know, they've got a great team. Um, you know, if somebody's having a bad day, they're not going to kick them off the team, right? Um, talk a little bit about your experience with you know, community, people, um, give some analogies of what that's been like for you. Go ahead. Our bus. So we have a bus. We have a bus. Yeah. Let's talk about the bus. Tell me about the bus. And um, we let the people on the bus that we want to be around. Um, and, and those are the people that, that um, hold us up. They hold us accountable. They um, encourage us. They we have some people that sit in the back of the bus, you know, those, those, those rowdy ones that, you know, are the, the bad kids. We've got some of them on our bus, but you know, for the most part, we, we've got a, a good group of people on our bus. And um, if you get a seat on our bus, it's, it's, it's a pretty good place to be. Um, and if you don't want to be on the bus, it just open that door and you can go. And, and that's fine with me because there's somebody else that I'll give your seat to. What I love about that bus analogy is, is the idea that, you know, we, we just know in, in our data, in our research, that we become like the five people we surround ourselves with, right? So when, when, if you're a parent out there, you wouldn't send your child to a school and have them get connected with a group of belligerent, bullying, drug addicted, mean kids, would you? I mean, no offense to those children, but they've got something going on in their lives and we don't necessarily want to expose our children to that environment. Well, why do we do that to ourselves? Why do we put ourselves in, in the presence of others who don't see the same things in terms of what they value? We've talked about values before on these calls. Um, and so, you know, putting people on our buses to drive across the country with where we get to laugh, um, enjoy each other's company, understand that we're still different, that there's no com competition. Um, we can cry safely. And let me tell you, my buses see me cry plenty. Um, and just know that we're better because we're together, right? And so create a community of people around you that lift you, right? Um, and that not only bring you joy, but there's, there's no, egos are left aside, let's put it that way, right? We are here because we're better with each other um, than alone and no one is, but we're equal. We're all on the same playing field, so to speak. Walt, I'm sure you have something that you could share with us about this. I would just add that it's okay. Sometimes you're driving the bus and sometimes you're a passenger on another bus. And I think what I would share is that as I've transitioned um, in what I do for a living per se, um, one of the things that I've tried to focus on of late is reconnecting with people who I was on a bus with um, that I truly have missed um, sharing things with. And, you know, I've been very lucky in the last couple of weeks to have reconnected with many people who I, I was on a bus with them. I don't know, you know, specifically how you would describe the bus other than we were all on the same bus going in the same direction. And I think over time, sometimes we get pulled in so many different directions in our day to day that we sometimes lose track of people who were played of a significant role on our bus at one point in time. And I think it's always good to try and think back and reconnect with people and understand that it's those relationships that are important because they hold you accountable. They, they are tied to your, your, your past, which is sometimes very pleasant. Um, obviously those things that might not be, you may want to avoid, but point being is that, you know, being around people and people who support you help you to reach your goals, whatever they are. 
and you get to share your goals, right? And I think we've talked in the past too, how many times have we talked about whenever you proclaim whatever your goal is to someone who you know, or someone who's on your bus and likewise, they, re they respond in the same way with their goals, you're more likely to be successful because you've proclaimed them publicly to somebody and to people who matter to you. Uh, so that's another advantage of finding the right people to either jump on the bus with or drive the bus for, whichever case it may be. I love that. I love that. And um, this morning I went on a run and I, I shared a little post about this earlier and I was running and saw my shadow in front of me. And it, I, you know, I get to thinking, I've got my, my, my Rocky music on generally. And, and I was like, I'm just gonna follow her. I'm just gonna take one step after she does. That sounds a little corny, but it just, it worked for me. And then I turned the, in the development, I turned the corner and all of a sudden she was right next to me. My little shadow was right there. And I was like, oh, she's still with me. And, and I can do this with her. I'm not chasing anybody. I'm just, so, I'm allowing somebody to take the lead and I'm allowing somebody to come with me. And, you know, I got my 3.1 miles in without stopping. Wow. Um, and thank you. And, and, but I also didn't obviously look behind me whenever my shadow was behind me because that wouldn't be helpful. So in, in my experience, like looking in the past doesn't serve me. It just brought me to where I am today. And so I just, I liked the visual of being able to have people in your life. Um, granted mine was just the shadow of me, but um, they're here to support you. They're here to lead the way. Um, and we take turns and sometimes there's a bus stop and sometimes we get off the bus and the bus continues, but with most loops, the bus will come back. You can get right back on, right? And, and so I, uh, I think we just wanted to really emphasize that you can set a goal for the next, you know, 70, 80 ish days of the year. Um, you can set a goal for the next week. Um, you can participate in doing your own little challenge of just take one more step a day or do one more activity a day. But the most important thing to have long-term health, long-term success is who you spend your time with. And so I know that every Wednesday night, other than last week, since the beginning of June, I have spent my Wednesday nights here with both of you. And I can't thank you enough because it's, um, it's a new experience. Um, we're putting it out there for the public. Um, it's helped me tremendously. So I want to say thank you to both of you. Um, mm -hmm. And to anybody who tends to watch and comment and share, we thank you as well. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I, I envision the red being up for another few weeks. So um, everybody can jump on that bus. It's called Red October. Um, but I have a strange feeling it's going to turn to green come February. So, you know, if anybody wants to start going out and looking for those things in green, we'll be right here switching our jerseys around. Uh, but this has been great. Um, hopefully everyone's getting something out of this and can can equate, you know, the things we're talking about into their own lives so that uh, they can have a little bit more fun and uh, think through things a little differently, maybe help them out. Fabulous. Paige, any final words? No, I mean, you know, these Wednesdays are fun. It's, um, Wednesdays are my long day at work. So this is... Uh, kind of nice to sit down and do this uh a little distracted tonight we had a incident with a dog that um i drove a half an hour to an emergency room to get him seen it was a six hour wait so i turned around and came back so i give him a lot of pain meds and see if i can keep him comfortable till i can get him seen somewhere so yeah. well we'll say a prayer for him as well of course i know that that's a hard moment and you made the decision to spend time with us in company because we have goals and because we're on the same bus we're on the same bus you know it's bad if he told me that he's worried about the dog because he does you know <laughs> he said i think you need to take him somewhere <laughs> he doesn't often tell me to take a dog to a vet willingly so uh, and that's why i love live videos because something <laughs> like this happens so i'm gonna share with you a crazy thing because my hair is still soaking wet but i went running and then Peter and I went for a walk and my shadow was back in front of me. I'm not exaggerating. I looked like Forrest Gump running. 
I had this tight head on my tight head on my head. I had this big frou frou hair sticking out on my side. And so uh, you never know what you might hear when you come listen to us live. So I really do hope that Dash is doing better with some pain control and he has a easy fix tomorrow um, as always. Oh. So if you start talking to Jiminy Cricket, you can just let us know because <laughs> we might send some help your way. Whoa. Yeah. Anyway, have a wonderful evening, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.